It's quite fitting that once upon a time, England's smallest man was born in England's smallest county. He seemed to have lived an extraordinary life filled with kings, queens, pirates, and even murder. In today's episode of Unusual as Usual, we're going to look into the tall tale of Lord Minimus, aka Sir Geoffrey Hudson. Geoffrey Hudson was born on the 14th of June 1619 in Rutland, England. His parents, three brothers and a half-sister were all of regular height. Hudson, on the other hand, was born with normal proportions but with an abnormally short stature, at his tallest measuring at only 43 inches. On Hudson's seventh birthday in 1626, he was presented to the Duchess of Buckingham as a rarity of nature. A few months later, the Duke and Duchess entertained King Charles I and his young French wife, Queen Henrietta Maria, in London. After their lavish banquet, a large pie was placed in front of the Queen. To her surprise, Hudson broke his way through the crust dressed in a miniature suit of armour. As you can imagine, the Queen was delighted, and the Duke and Duchess of Buckingham offered Hudson to her as an amusing gift. She accepted and invited Hudson to live at Denmark House in London to be her court dwarf. Hudson was one of several human marvels living in Denmark House, including William Evans, the Welsh giant who was among one of his housemates. Although dwarves were not an uncommon sight in royal courts of Europe, Hudson's dwarfism was unique. His perfect proportions were likely due to a lack of growth hormone. To add to his uniqueness, strange and bizarre tales would be told to explain his short stature. It was said that when his mother was pregnant, she choked on a gherkin, and it was this trauma that stunted his growth. In other variations, she was spooked by a horse, and in another, she ate poisonous berries. All, of course, were utter fiction. Sir Geoffrey Hudson, as he would become, went on to have adventures worthy of his title. In 1642, aged 23, he fought in the English Civil War, gaining him the title of captain. But by 1943, it became apparent that England was no longer safe for the Queen, and Sir Geoffrey Hudson was appointed the task of escorting her to France. Here, he learned to entertain with his wit and intelligence, rather than just his appearance. However, as he got older, he became much less tolerant about jokes at his expense, and quite rightly so. A quote taken from the letters of Queen Henrietta Maria reads, A gentleman of the household, Mr. Croft, lost no time in provoking the dwarf to challenge him. A duel, only made for fun, was arranged in the park. Croft and Hudson were to meet on horseback armed with pistols. William Croft was the Queen's master of horses. Really, he should have known better, but apparently he didn't see Sir Geoffrey Hudson as much of a threat. As he decided, rather than bringing a pistol to the duel, he would only bring with him a squirt gun, with the intention of further humiliation. Queen Henrietta Maria's letters continued, stating, The vengeful dwarf, however, managed his good steed with sufficient address to avoid the shower aimed at himself and his loaded pistols, and, withal, to shoot his laughing adversary dead. Sir Geoffrey Hudson, now having murdered a man in an illegal duel, not to mention the fact his victim was the brother of Lord Croft, a significant man of the court, was spared prison. But, as a punishment, he was banished from France. We see no record of Sir Geoffrey Hudson for a number of years. However, as the story goes, he was captured by pirates off the French coast and was shipped to Barbary, where he was sold into slavery, where he then disappeared off the face of the earth. That is, until a whole 25 years later, when he miraculously resurfaced in England. The date and circumstances of his rescue are unknown, but in the 1660s, several missions were sent from England to Algeria and Tunisia to rescue English captives. During one of these routine missions, Sir Geoffrey Hudson was likely amongst the group of slaves whose release was negotiated for. 
His first documented presence back in England was in 1669. Upon his return, Hudson was a changed man. Most remarkable was that during his captivity, he had added 45 inches to his height. Such growth spurts are not unheard of in cases of dwarfism, but the added height was not a blessing for Hudson. He may have expected a renewal of royal protection upon his return, but now aged 50 and having reached his full height of 3 feet 7 inches, he was no longer the tiny miracle he once was. He moved back to Rutland, where he presumably had relatives and remained there until 1678, before he decided to return to London seeking a pension from the royal court. Unfortunately, his timing was disastrous, as he arrived during a period of great anti-Catholic activity, and in a cruel twist of fate, he would actually be falsely accused of being associated with a popish plot, a plot to assassinate Charles II. Hudson was imprisoned and remained incarcerated at the Gatehouse Prison for three years until his release in 1681, when it was revealed that the Popish plot was a fictitious conspiracy theory fabricated by Titus Oates, also from Rutland. Oates gained the nickname Titus the Liar and was charged with perjury, imprisoned for life and sentenced to be paraded through the streets of London whilst being viciously whipped five days a year for the remainder of his life. Sadly, Sir Geoffrey Hudson died just a year later in 1682, aged 63, on an unknown date, in unknown circumstances, buried in an unmarked grave. Although short, Sir Geoffrey Hudson made a big impression and several life-size statues of him still stand today. One on the grounds of Longleat House, Warminster. Another in Fivey Castle in Aberdeenshire and the third stands in the Boat Inn, a public bar in Galway, Ireland. Multiple items of his clothing are also on display and can be seen in Sherborne Castle in Dorset. And there we have it, the tall tale of Lord Minimus, Sir Geoffrey Hudson. How about you? Had you ever heard of him until now? Let me know in the comment section below, and of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's all we've got time for today, but I'll see you all next week. And as always, stay unusual as usual. If you've enjoyed this video, you might like this one too. If you want to see more anatomical oddities, you can check out the full playlist by clicking here. Don't forget to ring that bell to make sure you don't miss out on next week's video. And if you have any ideas on what the next episode should be about, make sure you add it to the comment section below.